If you're a musician or an audio engineer, this video has the potential to instantly level up your music production skills. In fact, I promise you that if you watch until the end and download the free guide at audiouniversityonline.com slash ear training guide, you'll never hear music the same way again. I know this sounds like a lot of hype, but when I learned this technique that I'm about to show you, it really was a revolutionary moment for me. I used to feel kind of lost using EQ until one of my mentors taught me an easy trick for identifying frequencies by ear. Here's how it works. First, I'm going to boost one of these frequencies, and I want you to tell me which frequency is being boosted. Okay, if you don't already have a lot of experience mixing, and if you can't already identify frequencies, the best you can do here is guess, because you have no reference points. Now I want you to listen again, but this time, tell me which of these vowel sounds you hear. Do you hear the ah sound? Listen again. The octave frequency bands between 250 hertz and 4 kilohertz each have a corresponding vowel sound. And if you train yourself to hear these vowel sounds, or formants, it gives your ear something to latch onto. The frequency we've covered so far in this video is 1 kilohertz, which corresponds to an ah sound. But let's quickly go through the other frequencies. Again, I've created a free guide for you that includes each octave frequency band and the corresponding vowel sound. That guide can be downloaded with the link below the video, and the instructions in the guide will lead you to a free training platform that will allow you to practice using this method. At first, you start with pink noise because that's the easiest way to become familiar with these reference points, but eventually you can move on to more advanced exercises with music instead of pink noise. Let me quickly note that the spelling of each vowel sound will vary depending on your language and your pronunciation. These spellings are based on my understanding as a native speaker of Midwestern American English. You may need to adjust the spelling but the same basic principle will still apply. Let's do a few practice exercises to demonstrate how quickly you can start to apply this method to your own mixes. I'll leave the answers in the description below this video, and if you're brave enough, leave a comment with your answers before checking. This method isn't just for identifying frequencies in the mid-range. In the high frequencies, you can listen for these sibilant sounds. The S sound at 8 kHz is what I would describe as a pure S, while the sound at 16 kHz is a bit more abrasive, kind of like a TS. Differentiating between these cues is a bit more challenging, but let's run through a few exercises again. Check your answers in the show notes below. In addition to the cues my mentor taught me for mid-range and high frequencies, he also taught me some cues for identifying low frequencies. But these are even more difficult to hear, especially if you're using headphones. Rather than vowel sounds or sibilants, the trick with the low frequencies is to feel and localize haptic sensations in your body. Haptics are the felt vibrations that are most easily heard from subwoofers, kick drums, and other powerful low-frequency sound sources. My mentor taught me to listen for 125 Hz as vibrations in the chest, and to listen for 63 Hz as vibrations in the abdomen. Here's an example. Let's try some practice exercises. 
Again, check your answers using the answer key in the show notes below the video. In this video, we've used 12 dB boosts for each demonstration and exercise. But as you get better, you can start to decrease that, listening for more subtle boosts. And eventually, even learn to identify dips at each frequency. The first step is to download the ear training guide, which will help you get started. But if you stick with it, you'll get to the point where you can even identify multiple filters at once. Of course, it's even more practical when you start to practice with music. So as a final test, Let's try listening for each of these frequencies with a musical example. If you get these right, let us know in the comments. And if you don't get them right, that's completely fine. Just keep practicing and you'll get there.